Hello, and welcome to another episode of Builder Spotlight, a monthly interview with luthiers from all over, found exclusively at Acoustic.Coffee. In this episode, I'm very excited to be talking with Ed Zolatz from Downingtown, Pennsylvania. So grab a cup of your favorite coffee, and together we'll learn more about how Ed got started in luthery and his perspectives on building acoustic guitars. Ed, wonderful to have you join us for the Acoustic Coffee Builders Spotlight. Um, so I guess I want to start with, um, if you can tell us how it all began for you. When did you start building guitars and what got you started? Well, I, I, I'd sort of uh, been uh, uh, doing some, some woodworking of uh, uh, non-guitar origins. I, I started as a teenager making boomerangs, uh, you know. Uh, so, you know, that was, that was something a little different. I learned how to shape wood uh, doing that. Uh, then uh, when finally it came time to buy a house, I bought my house and uh, a friend of mine said, hey, you know, you, you probably need some tools. So, um, so he sold me a very nice cabinet saw, uh, a joiner and a planer. And at that point, I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Uh, and it, despite the fact that I started playing guitar at 13 years, it didn't, I, I didn't connect the dots that I should be uh, building guitars yet. So uh, at that point, I went through a, what I describe as the, uh, uh, the picture frames and birdhouses phase, uh, during which you know, I, I picked up uh, some hand planes and, and learned how to use those. There, there's a, a, a guy named Garrett Hack who uh, wrote a great book on hand planes called The Hand Plane Book. I got totally fascinated with uh, with how hand planes work. Uh, really, I and still am. I love hand planes, uh, but I still didn't know that I, I should be uh, uh, making guitars. And my wife got me uh, uh, for Christmas one uh, one year. Uh, she got me a, a course at the local woodcraft, and that was all it took. I was kind of the, the class geek, you know. I, I, there were three guys in the class. Uh, I would always show up with stuff already done, you know, I, I, I'd take the stuff home and, and, and working on it, on it at home. I was fascinated swapping uh, stuff out. Uh, for, it was a kit, uh, uh, just a kit build. So uh, I think it was uh, supposed to be five weeks turned into seven weeks. Uh, and I would spend the classes just talking to the instructor because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we we shared a, a common interest in in, in uh, the Campiano book, uh, William Campiano book, uh, guitar making. So we would just talk about that, and, and he would teach the class, and I would watch the other guys catch up. You know, um, so it was at that point I, I knew that uh, I had to do this. I, I tried to you know build furniture and stuff, and I just never had the imagination for furniture. I it, it just doesn't really, I guess, it doesn't do anything for me. I I can picture what a guitar what a nice guitar looks like having played guitar for so long. Uh, you just sort of can understand what a good one's supposed to, supposed to be, you know. Can't say that about furniture. <laughs> well, it sounds like you jumped right into the deep end, you know, with, with people. I've talked to a lot of people that have done everything from building houses to furniture to crafts. And instruments are at a completely different level. Uh, someday maybe I'll I'll get the the courage to to finish the violin that I started many many years ago, but that's intimidating to me. Um, but the I, I can I can see you now with your birdhouses and your your crafts um, and furniture is a, is I guess a step along the process. So on yourself at the woodcraft building the the guitar from the kit, um, what was it about that specific you know experience that made you think okay I'm going to do this from from scratch. So uh, really, what what did it for me was um, I, I conquering, I guess, this this uh, this reluctance to to get started. Right? I, there, there's a certain inertia that everybody has. I, I I'm sure a lot of people would like to to build and then think, now that's too hard. You know, that that's um, that seems like it would be really difficult. But I, I'd probably ruin it. You know, and you have to just jump in and and and, and start. If disaster strikes you, you know, this part of the learning process, you know, uh, uh, recovering from disaster. And, and there have been a few disasters I've recovered from. And, you know, each one was a learning experience. You walk away uh, while you're angry, <laughs> come back when you're cooled off and, uh, and get it done. 
Yeah, learning. Will, <laughs> you're right. It's a very important part of the learning process and the growing process. So while you're on that topic, or while we're, while we're discussing this, one of the questions that I have, is there an aspect of the building process that you found most challenging? And this follow-up to that is, was there any trick that you discovered to help you overcome that challenge? I, I guess everybody has nail, nail biters, you know, and, you know, for me, I, bending is still uh, a little, a little challenging. It depends on the wood, you know, uh, I, and then I, I sometimes bindings can be a, a little bit of a nail biter too, you know, especially since with all the binding tape, you know, you uh, put the binding tape down, put the binding tape down. You, you have no idea what, what you're going to unwrap later, you know, and, and that's a little bit of a nail, a nail biter too, a little bit less. So I, you know, the uh, fearing that, that little snap <laughs> that happens in the middle of a bend, you know, uh, is uh, yeah, that's, that's well, always difficult, you know. Um, so I take it you have experienced the the formidable um, wood that gives you the challenge and and goes by the way of a snap. Oh yeah, I I, I did a, a myrtle wood uh, instrument, uh, organ uh, myrtle wood, uh, a beautiful set, you know, a uh, nice spalted uh, organ myrtle wood, uh, uh, and you know that thing. Uh, it was very curly, a very curly set. So it, it, it uh, yeah, it um, had a couple different places where it cracked. And, you know, that's part of the, dis uh, you know, uh, recovering from disaster. Okay, so now I've got a crack, what do I do? Uh, and, and this is, um, uh, you know, this is a cutaway instrument too. So there was a lot of bending involved in, in, in that one. Uh, but, you know, you, you just um, uh, walk away for a while, compose yourself, and then go fix it. And it turned out fine. And that instrument now, you can't really tell that it had cracked, you know, you just. Um... So the, so staying on the bending for a second, since you've identified it as one of the most challenges and I, and I share that sentiment, it, it can be very challenging. Um, and, you know, be, outside of the fact that we learn by our mistakes, was there a learning or a, a book or guidance that, you learned along the way um, that actually help you improve that process. Well, the the the, the one big uh, uh, piece of wisdom, uh, and I don't know where I, I, I read this. I think I read it somewhere. Uh, oh, it, it may have actually been uh, from uh, the LMI videos. Uh, LMI has a bunch of really good uh, uh, instructional uh, videos with Robert O'Brien, and uh, that's that's been an incredible resource. So I think it may have been there, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, the idea that, uh, if, uh, especially if a wood's curly, uh, you want to spritz it instead of soaking, right. you know, th that whole thing. Um, I, that that was the big one. I, I you know now everything, even the straight grain stuff, I uh, I just spritz and I, I don't ever soak for a long time. But that that helped a lot, you know. So uh, just spray it down lightly. Uh, and that's enough. Just enough to get the, the fibers dancing. Here to that same line of questioning, um, what's the flip side of it? Is there is there a process in the building um, that you enjoy the most, that particular aspect that you love the most, you know, your favorite part of building? Yeah, this, that's probably a tie. I, so voicing the instrument's fun. Uh, that's also a challenge. I mean, it's, you know, there are times when things don't go the way you think, you think they're going to go. Uh, but uh, that's uh, uh, that's a fun process uh, to do the voicing, I, and you know I mean, maybe it's fun because it was such a mystery at first. You know, I, I read a lot of books. I you know, uh, and uh, in the beginning when I was starting to figure out how to make my own instruments, uh, it, it was really hard to find any information on on what to do to voice. You know, and and and, and so uh, figuring that out and finally getting it to work was uh, was really special. The other thing is carving a neck. Carving, uh, carving necks is a lot of fun. Uh, it, you know, on my first uh, from scratch instrument, uh, I remember uh, the, the prospect of carving the volute it scared me. I didn't know how, how uh, that was gonna go, you know, and it turns out it was really kind of easy. You just mark it and, and go, you know. Uh, 
So, you know, a carbon nexus is a, is a lot of fun too. A builder once told me one of their favorite parts of guitar is, is the proverbial, you know, you carve away everything that's not a guitar, but there is something satisfying about removing just the right amount of wood, whether it's profiling the neck or, or tuning the tops, you know, and, and scalloping. Um, that, that is certainly very enjoyable. Yeah, and then, you know, having something that, that, that just feels good in the hand, you know, I, 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 that, that feedback process is great too, isn't it? You know, you finally get something that just feels right. You know, you know the person who's going to be playing it is, uh, is going to feel that same thing, you know. If there was a way to carve the neck with the strings on it so we could get a real feel, then uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that would be even better. I'm going to shift gears a little bit here and just um, ask you a couple of the, uh, your opinions regarding the tone wood. So much has been written about the sound of wood and, and you know, sourcing the wood and where it comes from and, um, you know, yeah. how we harvest it, how we're being responsible. But, you know, when we think about tone woods and when you think about the tone woods that you've been able to work with, do you have a favorite type of wood and um, similarly a least favorite type? That's a good, that's a good question. I, so I, I started out uh, loving uh, cedar as a top wood. That, uh, you know, that, that came from uh, a particular instrument that I uh, acquired uh, at a certain point that I, I still love. Uh, it was the thing that really got me interested in building and that was a, a Loudon 023. So I love the cedars at first, but uh, now I've really taken uh, a liking to Adirondack spruce, you know, uh, as a top wood. Uh, Adirondack spruce is just, you know, you can make a very powerful instrument with Adirondack. So now I'm, I'm starting to really lean towards the spruces. Uh, you know, I, they're all special. I, I love Port Orford cedar too. Um, I've made a couple Port Orford uh, cedar instruments. Actually, the one right here is, is Port Orford cedar. Uh, there's a I, there's a certain wonderful smell that comes from Port Orford cedar. You know, when you play the instrument, you can get little wafts of of uh, this this beautiful smell. You know, uh, so I, I, I love that. But uh, Adirondack uh, really really does it for me. And as far as back and sides woods, that's a harder uh, harder choice. You know, really. Uh, I, uh, you know, the, uh, the last instrument I finished was an Indian rosewood instrument, and I, I really love the way that sounds. Um, uh, the uh, Oregon myrtle wood I, I mentioned, I, I love that instrument. Uh, that uh, that's a really fun wood to work with, uh, assuming it doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't snap when you you bend it. Uh, otherwise, that's that's a fun wood. It, it really got a lot of character. Uh, no, no two pieces are the same. I made a Zeracote instrument that I absolutely love. Um, that stuff's a little bit um, troublesome. <laughs> uh, it's uh, quite brittle. And it has a personality of its own, without question. Yeah, but as a tone wood, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it makes a, a, a nice sounding guitar. So, um, Ed, what would you say is the most important environmental factor you would, as you hand the guitar off to the owner, that you would share with them? Basically, don't leave it in a car. <laughs> First of all, uh, you know, uh, keep it in, in, uh, in comfortable condi condition. You know, that, that's the biggest one. Uh, uh, you know, keep it in the case uh, when, when you can. Tr treat it carefully. You know, uh, so many people I, I, I encounter uh, aren't real careful with their instruments. You know, uh, I get it that, it that it's just a tool, but it, it doesn't need to be looked after. So, and, and the big one is don't leave it in a car ever <laughs> for any length of time. So what is your advice or how would you, what, 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 what would you share with someone who, who is in your shop for the first time and, and saying that they're really interested in doing this. Is there any words of wisdom that you would impart on them? So, so first of all, um, uh, listen to uh, what everybody has to say about, uh, about building. You know, seek out information from all kinds of builders. The interesting thing about uh, Luthery is that everybody has, you know, th th their own take on, on what uh, building an instrument should be. You know, there are a lot of voices that, uh, you know, and everybody's very passionate about it. 
uh, and sometimes the, uh, the, the voices conflict. You know, they're not all saying the same thing. If you're lucky enough to have a, a class available like I had, uh, that's a, a wonderful way uh, to get started. If not, building a kit guitar from, uh, from you know, one of the luthier places, the uh, Stumac or uh, LMI. They have, uh, they have kits that might whet your appetite. You'll, you'll probably get a really good instrument out of, the, out, out of the deal. It might not be perfect. It might not be what you ultimately uh, I, I think is a great instrument, but uh, it'll demonstrate to you that it's not that scary. And, uh, you know, uh, as, as I started to do more, uh, more and more complicated things, I would just practice every operation that I was unsure of uh, on on scrap wood first, because uh, you know every instrument, every build is you you, you pile up all these operations that uh, hopefully have gone successful, and uh, e each successive one has a little more at stake. So uh, so the practice thing, you know, uh, j just practicing on scrap wood before you do the real uh, the real instrument um, almost guarantees that that you're going to be successful. Uh, it's a much better way to go about things. Yeah, that's great. So while we're on this topic, you know, in the spirit of open sources, was there, were you able to network and collaborate with other builders along the way in your journey? Not really. No, I, I, I've kind of been a lone, lone wolf uh, <laughs> uh, after, after the initial class. Uh, Do you have a favorite of your, the instruments that you've built? Uh, I, I just recently uh, finished a fan fret uh, that was uh, a really experimental in its instrument for me. I'd, I'd never made a fan fret before. I had to figure out how to how to do it. It, it took a lot of meditation to uh, to puzzle out how, how to uh, construct it. There are a lot of uh, uh, subtleties that uh, uh, you encounter when you're uh, you're puzzling that out. That, that instrument also had um, had a body bevel, so figuring out how to, how to do that was uh, a bit of a conundrum. So, oh, yeah, figuring out all the operations to be successful in doing that um, was interesting. So, I, it, it's my favorite maybe because of the challenge it represented. Uh, it was a design challenge. I mean, I had to um, I had to redesign the bridges that I make because uh, I, when the bridge is inclined by 25 degrees, uh, the strings spread out a little bit more. Uh, everything changes where the saddle sit change. Uh, uh, some, uh, some obstacles that you wouldn't think are obstacles, uh, you know, pop up in your way. So that uh, instrument represents uh, the biggest challenge I've, I've had so far. <laughs> well, that's, that's good to hear. I mean, you know, when we're in our shop and we're, we're working on these instruments, you, you just follow all the steps and you listen to the wood and you do everything that you think is right, but it's not really until you get the strings on the instrument and you can start to hear how it actually you know, responds. Um, that's kind of a, an important moment in the journey. At least it is for me. So. Oh yeah, putting the strings on is, is uh, a, a real special moment. I'll never forget the, the first instrument that I put, uh, you know, that I put together uh, from scratch. Uh, I remember putting safety glasses on <laughs> just in case. <laughs> that is, I don't put safety glasses on anymore. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, I, that's a first for me. I have not, I have not put safety glasses, but then I, I, I wear the, the cheaters. So I have some sort of uh, eye protection on, I guess, technically, but um, that's, that's really great. That's really great. <laughs> Are you are you focused primarily in the guitars that you've made, Ed, in um, all wood guitars, meaning the wood bindings? Do you get involved at all in the celluloid, tortoise, um, plastic, ivoryoid, any any of those materials? I I, I like wood, uh, you know, and and so uh, everything uh, I would like everything to be wood. Uh, I I enjoy working with wood. Uh, that's I, I have, I think, uh, put a couple of carbon fiber inserts in uh, in necks that I thought might might need it. Uh, the, the first instrument I made with a maple neck, for example, I, uh, maple tends to be a little bit um, uh, dynamic, <laughs> so 
So uh, I, just to be sure, I put uh, carbon fiber outriggers uh, uh, to, the, to the side of uh, uh, the truss rod. But apart from that, I don't do too much in the way of, uh, of non-wood uh, construction. I just like wood. You know, and, and that's the joy of it, isn't it? I find in the most beautiful piece of wood uh, that also might sound good if uh, if it's uh, you know a part of the main main construction and you know just um, just highlighting how how beautiful those things are. Uh, Without question, sourcing the wood has become one of my favorite uh, uh, parts and and uh, aspects of the building process. Uh, going to different places and and finding that piece of wood that is been around for a long time that you can, your eyes can see it and, and know that it just belongs to be part of an instrument. Um, so that, that, that is a very enjoyable part of, of what I find um, rewarding in the process. Uh, the, the all wood application. So I guess at some point you're going to be introducing wooden frets. <laughs> well, not exactly. No, <laughs> I, I do uh, a little bit of inlay, you know, uh, but uh, I, I enjoy the, 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 uh, working with Shell too. Uh, I, I respect uh, those people that that are very good at inlay. Uh, I, I wish I could I could be that good at that stuff. Um, but I, I tend to not uh, want to use a lot of, of, of inlay. It's just very minimalistic. Twelfth fret. That's it. Okay. Uh, and then a headstock. Uh, the, Maybe the, someday I'll get more bold. The, the, so the art of, of uh, you know, getting your jewelry saw out and cutting the pearl and, and the inlay, you know, that, that adds to the complexity and the interest from my perspective, at least, you know, it's, there's so many parts to, you know, from sourcing the wood to getting that final setup, the intonation, you know, and the delivery of the, you know, the finish, the polish of the finish. Oh, there's, there's thousands of different little details that you get to take with you along the journey and, um, you know, adds to the, the interest, you know, at least from the variety of different things that we do as, as luthiers, so. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about luthier, isn't it? I, I, it's, it's hard to get bored uh, because I, 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 as soon as uh, you are complete with one task, then there's an entirely different task waiting for you that, uh, uh, that's totally different and uh, 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 takes a different part of your attention to, uh, uh, to get right, you know, and, and uh, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, each one is very nuanced and, and, and very interesting. So it's hard to get, uh, get bored with this. I, uh, I, completely, I completely agree. I was having a conversation with someone the other day and they were talking about how they have many different interests and they like to, you know, become passionate about something and then move on to something else. And that's exactly what the, the, the instrument building is for me. It's, it's a journey of a thousand different skills and you go into the shop that morning and you don't have to worry about the manufacturing. I, I've done the, the multiple guitars at one time approach and I didn't enjoy yeah. it as much as the intimacy you have with from the time you start with the, the raw wood you know, in every aspect of crafting and gluing and, you know, joining and, and carving to get to the finish. And then you start another one. So a lot of different steps, a lot of variety, but that's a great way of putting it. It's hard to get bored. <laughs> well, it is. And uh, uh, especially when, when you have immediate feedback, when you complete a step and, and then you uh, either take off the binding tape or, or uh, you know, just stand back and, and look at what, what you've done. And, it, you know, uh, each each step along the way is rewarding. It, it, you, you get this this kick from from doing it successfully. That that should be a, a way more powerful draw than any sort of um, uh, fear of uh, uh, you know how complicated the process is because it, it's really just about taking all these little steps that are that result in a beautiful instrument. You know. Uh, that's an interesting. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting perspective. Ed. I, 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 there certainly is a, um, uh, a very personable relationship we have with every aspect of the building process. Um, that doesn't require you know other people holding the brackets and welding and sawing. You know, there's not 14 hands you know on the instrument at one time. So that's a really oh, yeah. interesting perspective on on the way to look at it. 
Well, you know, this, this this appeals to me too because having played guitar for a long time, uh, I, after a certain period of time, I realized that <laughs> I'm not good at playing in front of people. I, I'm really I don't like being in front of people doing this, <laughs> you know, which is a really crazy thing if if you love the instrument, you know. Uh, so being in a workshop doing uh, your art in private, you know, uh, without anybody watching you, it, it's kind of wonderful. You know, it, you, you get to do the thing uh, in, a, in a space where you're comfortable uh, and, and then show the results, uh, you know, sometime later. You know, that, that pacing for me is, 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 uh, is much more suitable. You know, I'm too much of an introvert to play. Uh, you know, in, in, in front of a large crowd. I, I understand. I understand. Well, Ed, um, I want to just kind of close out here by saying thank you very much for being part of the Builder Spotlight. And um, we're really happy that you joined us. Oh, uh, thank you for, uh, for having me. I, it, was, it, was, uh, it was great having, uh, having this talk. Thanks, Ed. Thank you for joining us on Builder Spotlight. Be sure to sign up at acoustic.coffee and we'll send you a notice when the next episode is ready. Until then, happy brewing, happy building, happy strumming.